What is going on you guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel here, my name is Brandon. In this video, we are going over two stocks to buy this week or two stocks to buy now. Doesn't really matter when you buy it, but uh, do your own research, do your own due diligence as always. But these are two dividend stocks that I'm very much liking at the moment. And I know how much you guys love it when I talk about Canadian stocks and you're always pushing me go Canadian, Canadian, Canadian. To be completely honest with you guys, surveying the options out there, I'm not liking, I'm not loving the amount of Canadian stocks at the moment. In fact, where I wanna put my money right now, I'm looking a lot more at the US. In fact, over the past few months, the Canadian market, the TSX in general, has held up quite well, given everything that's been going on in our world. And um, energy has been an area that's really been propping up the TSX. In fact, I was just looking at some numbers. TSX year to date is up. 3.5%, uh, so we have a gain on the year. Compare that to the US, well, US market is down 4.6%, down nearly 5%. We know tech has had really big sell off Some of our big, big blue chip tech stocks over there are really kind of driving that. But uh, nevertheless, when I'm looking for the different pockets of opportunity and value, I'm looking at the US, but nevertheless, I was able to throw in one Canadian stock, one US stock uh, in this video. And before we get started, if you guys didn't catch my most recent video, you can now join the Investing Academy today, link down below for $19.99. If you've ever wanted to join our training programs and get access to hours upon hours upon hours, 100 plus hours of training content, whether you're a beginner, whether you're intermediate, we've even partnered up with some other cool contributors here in the Canadian market to add even more content to the platform. We've sold these programs in the past for over $8,000. You can join today for $19.99. That's that first link down below. No jokes, nothing. It's just crazy and I would, Really suggest you check it out if, you, if you'd like to. But um, yeah, let's get started today here, guys. If you enjoy, give this a thumbs up. The first company is our Canadian one, and it is the company Restaurant Brands, ticker QSR.TO. Today's shares are trading for $72.84 Canadian. Although it may not be populated on this page, they do pay a nice dividend of 3.8%, so a very nice starting yield that you'll be looking at today. And I will be completely honest with you guys, this is a stock that I have talked about on the channel before. So going back maybe a year or two, I've mentioned QSR. This has been one of those stocks that hasn't, it's been kind of underwhelming with the performance. It's kind of just treaded water. In fact, actually came down uh, a decent amount. It has not panned out the way that I would have loved. However, I don't think that this is, we should be calling it quits on a company like QSR just yet. I think that there is still room to grow. And if you are not familiar with QSR, well, this is of course the company behind Burger King. Tim Hortons and Popeyes. Now, more recent news, they made an acquisition to a company called Firehouse Subs, which is not a company that I've ever heard about before, but they do look kind of good, the subs, I'd say. They don't look amazing, to be honest, but uh, these would be basically their four different divisions or segments right now. Burger King is obviously the largest franchise. We see here 19,000 locations. Tim, Horton, Tim Hortons comes in at the second largest with just over 5,000 locations. Then you have Popeyes coming in at third and then their new acquisition, Firehouse Subs. Now on this page, where I think is worth mentioning is when you look at the different markets that they have kind of entered into. And Burger King obviously is, you know, world known and it's all over the place, but the other one's not quite so much. And in fact, I believe that this is where the opportunity lies. When you actually look into where this company, what they have been doing and where they are looking to go, the name of the game is international expansion. They just announced quite recently that they plan to have about 300 stores in India when it comes to Tim Hortons. So not a lot, uh, given that this is over a 10 year period, but nevertheless, tapping into that market, Popeyes in South Korea, just to name a few. When you are expanding into these international markets, essentially trying to replicate something that's worked well in you know Canada or North America or whatever the case is, and then expanding, that does always come with risk. It always comes with the fact, it always comes with the possibility that they're not able to execute, that the products are not as liked and uh, well welcomed into these other parts of the world. But nevertheless, there is a road, there is a road for opportunity. To put it that way, there is a runway. You know, when you compare this up to a company like McDonald's, for example, which is obviously another competitor in the quick service restaurant business or fast food space, they are everywhere. Everywhere you go, you're gonna have McDonald's and they're kind of having a different set of problems. It's not like they need to continue expanding, it's more about being more efficient. Well, with restaurant brands, the name of the game is getting the numbers up and expanding. And what particularly intrigued me uh, with this company is I was looking at their numbers and 
Earnings per share, these are US dollars, although we are looking at a Canadian stock, it does also trade on the US exchange as well. But um, earnings per share is obviously a number that we need to really keep an eye on. And it's one that has definitely fluctuated over the past little while, uh, especially during the pandemic years. So let's say the past couple of years with COVID, I mean, we can kind of chalk those, I would say, because in general, what I actually find is quite fascinating is if you look at what the analysts are saying over on Yahoo Finance, current quarter and next quarter look phenomenal in terms of EPS growth. Projecting out five years, this number jumped out to me. They're expecting 27% annual growth in earnings per share. This is without a doubt quite attractive. Again, combo that up with the potential runway of them expanding if they're able to hit these estimates and how this business operates just FYI in many regards is a franchisee model. So they're essentially, you know, putting all these stores out and kind of collecting, collecting, collecting on the way back. One thing that I would like to point out and note with this company is that they do have a pretty significant amount of debt, right? For a con against this company, or at least something to be aware about, debt does sit, if you look at their total debt at 13.5 billion, this is something that is obviously going to be in place when they are going out and, you know, acquiring new companies and expanding, but uh, they are buying back shares, which I think is a positive. And again, if they are able to grow EPS at, at 27% uh, per year or somewhere in that ballpark, a lot of that money, a lot of that cash flow that they're pulling in can be used to whittle away at this debt. To me, this is more or less playing the long-term game with this company because these expansions don't just happen overnight. And in fact, they happen quite over time. However, if you are someone that's looking for exposure to this space with the Canadian stock, you don't have all too many choices. And this is probably what you're gonna be looking at. Again, I would much prefer to go invest down South uh, in the States, but I know a lot of you guys just say, hey, well, Canadian, Canadian, Canadian. So you know what? I still think there's still a lot of opportunity here. And in the meantime, this is a video talking about two dividend stocks. You are going to be pulling in some very nice dividends along the way as you kind of wait for this to happen. Today, the company pays a dividend of again, or a yield, excuse me, of about 2.8, 2.9%. An awesome starting yield nonetheless. This is about a $2.12 payout in Canadian dollars on an annual basis. Payout ratio we see here is at 62%. This is nothing that concerns me. I know for a lot of people that may think that's kind of high, but in a case like this, rather than looking at net income, given the fact that this company has so much debt, given that there's a lot going on kind of under the hood, I think that cash flow is a more accurate number to look at or a more accurate metric to look at in terms of if they're able to fund these dividends. And again, if we just kind of put COVID year aside, because for a lot of companies, I think we can do that they have been steadily growing their free cash flow. And here I see basically no immediate concerns with the dividends. I think that there's ample coverage. I think that this would be a rather safe dividend. In summary, this is a stock that I think may be suitable for a patient investor, one that is really, really thinking long-term and gonna give this company the time it requires to kind of go through an expansion like this. And it's for an investor who does understand and acknowledge the unknowns and the risks that do come with this, the uncertainty as to how this will play out. Nevertheless, I do think it's fair to say that along the way, if you do kind of buy into this company, it's one that you want to be invested in, you're gonna be collecting some reliable dividends along the way. One thing that I've noticed in particular with food companies, I think to a company like Domino's, for example, there's a number of other examples, but a lot of times they kind of go through these swells, they kind of fall out of favor and they're just these boring companies and then something happens, you know, they make one change or one flip. And then all of a sudden they're, they're a trending stock and they're performing super well. Will this be the case with the company restaurant brands? We will have to wait and see. This is a stock that FYI, I do own in my Wealth Simple Trade account. So in my dividend portfolio, where I am focused more on the Canadian market, again, I do like the reliable dividends. Today, the shares are trading at $72.84. I'm not ready to call it quits on this company yet. And that is stock number one. It is the company Restaurant Brands International. Now, before we move on into our second stock, which you are definitely gonna to wanna to stick around for, a new stock here on the channel and one that I'm very likely going to be adding in the upcoming week, I do just wanna say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Passive. Passive is a partner here on the channel. There's something that we use really on an ongoing basis when we're looking at our portfolio and deciding what we need to do it is a platform that is completely free to use. And if you are a Questrade user, you even get their premium package all included at $0 annual fee. This is without a doubt a very useful tool to have in your arsenal when it comes to rebalancing your portfolio, when it comes to when it comes to kind of automating things, you can do things like one click trades and literally this all syncs up with your apps. You don't have to input things like that. You set your parameters, you set what you want for your asset allocation and they'll essentially handle the rest. But there is a link down below this video where you can click and let them know that I sent you. I'm a supporter of Passive. Again, one of our favorite partners here on the channel and thank you to Passive for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. Now moving along into the second stock for today's video, this is a brand new stock to the channel. It's one that I have been researching 
pretty much all week and loving what I'm seeing to the point where I am basically just waiting for the market to open to buy this stock. It is the company Williams Sonoma, ticker WSM. Today trades for $141 USD. This does trade on the New York Stock Exchange, but today they pay 2.2% dividend. And just taking a look at the share price, very, very strong run coming out of the pandemic, 2019 or 2020, sorry. And shares are down about 35% off highs. I still think despite that, that this is a buy. And like I said, very likely gonna be adding a position uh, in the upcoming week. And again, as part of the Academy, if you guys do join for $19.99 a month, you'll know every stock trade I make. I forgot to mention that, but you see my entire portfolio. Every time I buy a stock, you know why, right up, price, everything. So if you do care to follow along with that, it's $19.99 a month down in the down in the description below. But uh, William Sonoma, for those not familiar, this is basically the consumer retailer company known primarily for selling kitchenware. So you may have seen them around, maybe you shop at them. Uh, I've only been into one maybe once or twice, actually quite recently because I was looking to buy, I'm looking for one of those pots. I don't know what they're called. They're like those pots uh, that you would cook stew in, that you would cook basically a lot of different things in, but they're those heavy duty pots. It's not a crock pot, obviously, but it's um, it's just a pot. And they're, they're quite expensive, at least some of the ones I'm looking at, they're at least a few hundred bucks because I think they're very good quality. Nevertheless, you can get these at Williams Sonoma. They're known for their kitchenware, but of course they're also involved in the home furnishing space because Williams Sonoma also owns brands like Pottery Barn, as well as more modern and kind of one that's more up my alley is a company known as West Elm. There are a couple others, but those are basically the ones that jump out to me. Why I like this stock, you know, this is a stock that never really would have crossed my radar because I'm not the personal, just personally, I'm not the biggest fan of investing in these like, you know, traditional brick and mortar retailers. Like there are a couple of retailers that I do like, um, a small number of them, but especially like an old company like this that sells like pots and pans and, you know, couches, not really my cup of tea. But when you look at their website, this is what I found quite fascinating. Just reading here, and this font, by the way, is quite, I think it's quite terrible. You can barely read it, but it says, today, William Sonoma Inc. is one of the, is one of the United States largest e-commerce retailers with some of the best known and beloved brands in home furnishings. In fact, I dug a bit deeper. They are in the 25 top e-commerce retailers in the United States. And I took it a step further and basically found out that of the $8.2 billion that they've done in revenue last year, 66% was driven via their e-commerce channel. And when you marry that up to why the stock has done oh so well, well, the e-commerce growth, this e-commerce channel and being able to sell digitally online, this has been game changing for this company. And I don't do much of this shopping myself, but like I know, for example, my wife, my wife is a wizard when it comes to deals and finding out what is available on anything, whether it's clothing or stuff for the house, it's insane. And clearly she's not the only one. Clearly there are masses out there who are buying these types of products. In fact, we actually bought our couch, like our couch we bought online, which I know sounds kind of you know crazy to say. We did go in stores and try it, but we actually purchased the order online. They delivered to our house. And clearly this is the way that things are going. And it's working out really, really, really well for this company. Actually, to me, I almost look at this company, which may be mistaken as a traditional retail play with their brick and mortar stores. I consider this now a sneaky e-commerce play with 66% of their sales. What is that? Two thirds of their sales driven in the form of digital. And when I take a look at the numbers here, this is one of the most beautiful company metrics that I've looked at in quite some time, which is why you can see I'm so excited. There is not a single line on this page that concerns me or that worries me. In fact, they all look quite good and I don't need to go through every single one, but whether it's revenue and we've seen that grow year on year on year on year, whether it's their margins expanding, whether it's their operating income, whether it's their operating margin, obviously, net income has essentially tripled uh, where I have highlighted here over the past five or six years, earnings per share growing very, very well as well. Dividends, we're gonna talk about dividends in just a moment, obviously, because it's a dividend video. Payout ratio, take a look at this payout ratio and where it is sitting at today, either in the 2022 year or the trailing 12 months. This is a company that has been reducing and buying back shares, hence, of course, you know, contributing to the earnings per share growth or the book value per share growth. That's a component of it. 
cash flow looks strong on both levels. This is a company that is, you know, performing very, very, very well. And whatever metric you want to look at here, I, I give it kind of the check mark or the green light. They've been crushing their earnings. So quarter after quarter after quarter, beat after beat after beat. But in terms of the dividend, again, probably what you guys are interested in today, you have the 2.2% yield. This is $3 and 12 cents in uh, actual payouts. The payout ratio a sub 20% payout ratio is just something that I was not expecting to see here. And again, that has come down in the, in the few years, but a double digit five year growth rate. So not only are you getting a nice dividend, a reliable dividend, but they're actively growing it. In fact, they've been growing the dividend for 12 years in a row, just a month or so back. This was in March actually. So a few weeks back, they announced a 10% increase to the dividend again, right in that double digit range. And this is a stock that again, is relatively new to my radar. And before I pull the trigger, I'm gonna be doing my last minute due diligence here, making sure that I'm not missing anything major. But when I look at the stock today, trading at a PE below 10, with a really, really healthy dividend metric, again, shifting to somewhere that I think you wanna be in the digital sales, the retail sales, I think that this stock is a steal. And for $141 uh, American or USD, despite the strong growth, it's one that's definitely high on my radar and uh, very well maybe adding it in the coming week. But uh, that's it for the video today, guys. I'd love to know what you think of these two stocks. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Any comments or feedback to share, feel free to leave them down below. If you enjoyed the video, please take a moment and drop a thumbs up before you go. And honestly, what I would just say as a reminder is that yeah, if you didn't catch that last video, I'll link it up at the top or you can just go watch the last video that I posted on my channel. We made the decision to basically cut the price of our training like to nothing, not nothing, obviously, but um, significantly. And our goal here, as it has been on the channel, if you're just watching this for the first time, I want you guys watching this video to all be doing the right things with your money. I want you to know what you're doing with your portfolio, with your finances, making sure that you know how to do things as a DIY investor. I really, really do. And hopefully this new price range is something that is affordable and in your means. You can literally go through everything that we've ever created for $19.99 a month. You don't have to commit for a certain time. You don't have to do this or that. Cancel if you want after a month or two months or three months. The goal of course is that you enjoy the program so much and we're gonna be putting new content out and you get a variety of other bonuses and features like our community chat, uh, our live sessions, trade calls. It's pretty wild, I would say. and the flow of people that have came in yesterday, today, as we speak, it's um, welcome to all the new members as I'm meeting a lot of you guys here in the discord. But if you are watching this for the first time, whether you're a complete beginner, like if you've never invested before and you're just watching this video for some reason, looking for stocks to buy, uh, if you're experienced and you just wanna know how we research stocks, what sources we use, what's our process, the balance sheet, earning reports, like whatever it is, we have training for all different skill levels and you get basically access to all of that for 19.90 a month. There's a lot more. We've partnered up with Adam Bourne and um, Addy and a company called Moolah. It's pretty darn cool. My goal is to build this platform into the go-to source, the go-to hub for financial education, whether it be stock market, whether it be real estate, whether it be dividends, you name it. And um, you can learn all about that by clicking the link down below. That is the Investing Academy. But as always, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.